Sarah Turner, how are you? Very good, as usual, Russ. Very, very good. Good. I always, I, you know, I've been listening to our old episodes, and there are, you can tell what time of day it is based on my greeting to you. So I'm like, if it's really like, Sarah Turner, how are you? It's the afternoon, <laughs> I've had my coffee. If it's the morning, I'm typically like, Sarah Turner. It's a little more, <laughs> a little more low key. So, and I, my, my coffee's here. I have not had my morning coffee yet, but oh, how are you? Dude, I'm good. Well, see, I'm the other way around. You can tell the time of day for me too, because I'm really great, but that means it's morning here. Right. Um, yeah, fabulous. Yeah, totally I good. Do, it is nice that we're matching mornings now. Not, yes, you know, that's nice. Yeah. How is how is Amer- how is your world your your US tour going? You of and Bruce America. Springsteen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, fabulous. Fabulous. Good. Texas today. Re- yeah, I love it. Yeah. It's- you're just going to the biggest states. You're going Florida, Texas, California. You're just going to go you like square footage. No, no, I'm not fussy. No, don't not at all. I am not fussy. I will go where I'm invited. So wherever yeah. the sun goes. Well, yeah. I, we're going to meet soon. <laughs> One of these episodes are going to be live and in person, which is going to be amazing. Because what's absolutely shocking is you and I have never met in person. Exactly, exactly. And all that stuff we talk about communication, biophotons, yeah, you know, being in energy fields, all of that stuff we haven't actually done. So next no. month is next the date. Month. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm going to, I have like one of those, brace, like, brace. Um, those like uh, paper chains where I'm going to, every day I'm going to rip one off. And, like, I'm getting closer, getting closer. Yeah, right. I'm so excited. Okay. So we have, we have another guest. I see another person here. Do you want to introduce another rebel yes, friend? We for have us? a rebel friend. We have a rebel friend because we've done a few where we're kind of making friends as we go along. But this is, this is a genuine friend of mine. So this is a fabulous biohacker, um, Dasha who I've known for a while and who I actually did get to meet in real life uh, recently, which was super cool. Um, And Dasha is kind of a fellow rebel scientist. She's a fellow neuroscientist. uh, And she's going to talk about my favorite topic, which is the brain. Oh, my gosh. I love the brain. Dasha, how are you? I'm great. (laughs) It's the morning here. It's definitely the morning here. And before, and just to caveat before we keep going, I offer to the two of you to meet in person here down in Dominican Republic. So come on down. Oh, there's an offer. <laughs> if you're, if yep. you're following us on, then, um, then here it is. Come on we'll down. We'll follow up. We will follow up with, with uh, next season, Sarah and I will go on a, a, a road show together and we'll do it. We'll be there. We'll do it. Yeah. The Dominican Republic Roadshow. Why not? Why not? Because I know you're doing stuff down there. We're going to talk a bit about that later, Dasha, but maybe that's something that we can come on. That's super cool. Sure. 100%. So, Dasha, who are you? I, 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 we, we've heard great things, but can you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure thing. Um, I'm a ex-consultant who got ill. Like most of us, we all had our health problems, health challenges. Um, and by realizing that many of my health issues were not being solved by doctors, I needed to take it into my own hands. So specifically when I say ill, I mean, I had six brain injuries, so I enjoy smashing my head, um, because I like sports and I like to just go for it. So I had a brain injury when I was 18 for a car accident, followed by, skiing, mountain biking, kiteboarding, wake surfing. And then the last one, uh, which was about two and a half, three years ago, was salsa dancing. I was not drinking and I have been dancing salsa for years. So I just got dropped on my head. And oh. um, and it was, a, it was a beautiful blessing in disguise because now I'm in this space of biohacking and helping others. So I, I left corporate America and came into, um, into this field. Uh, and like Sarah had mentioned, I started my master's in neuroscience, but because of the brain injury, I actually never finished it. Uh, so there's an element of, 
I was studying the brain as I had a broken brain and I became case study, my own case study. And for two years, for two years, I had chronic fatigue, chronic anxiety, depression, exhaustion. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't hold a conversation because I couldn't continue the thoughts. Mm. And as somebody who very much identifies or identified with my brain, that was quite a challenge. And yeah, we can get into what I did and what I didn't do uh, and what worked, but that's, that's kind of me in a nutshell. Yeah. I'd love to, on the injury side, uh, I have, my daughters are all athletes. I was an athlete, uh, played a little bit of sports in college and I had massive amounts of football injuries. Um, and my, my one daughter, fantastic athlete played soccer, um, and got three consecutive concussions and had to stop playing. She couldn't focus her grades dropped, couldn't be in the bright lights and anxiety and depression kicked in. And so, um, I'm, I'm curious, the first one, was it a concussion or was it actually something a little bit, you mentioned a car accident, it was, must've been a little bit more, more tragic. Yeah, it was a, it was a traumatic brain injury. So concussions are mm. known as the concussions are types of traumatic brain injuries as are whiplash potentially. Uh, but they all fall under TBIs. Okay. Uh, what's interesting is that again, it can be different severity. Our car flipped, fl- uh, rolled twice and flipped once. And so it was, I mean, we celebrate that as a, as a second birthday for my entire family. Uh, but it, yes, it can be a lot more severe. Um, so I think What's interesting, and I go, I'm glad that you actually brought that up of your daughter, and I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but it's so much more common yeah. than we think. Yes. So exactly. much more common. Yeah. Our kids our kids are getting sl- are slammed left, right, and center with football, mm-hmm. soccer, lacrosse, gymnastics. I mean, all of these things, we're running around and we're not preserving the thing that's letting us run around, which is our brain. Right. Right. Yeah, and and I love that there that people are starting to become more aware of it, and um, with with football, especially American football, they're they're starting to say yes, our our players need to be a lot more cautious, and the time to get back on the field needs to be much longer, right? right? Yeah. So I'm I'm very happy to see that, but anytime I think about little kids bashing their heads and then getting back onto the field within a week or two weeks or even five weeks. I, I wonder if that's always enough. Yeah, right. it, it, that's a brilliant thing you brought up because we had Dr. Joe DeGiro on podcast and he was talking, you know, most people have had some kind of brain damage and they just don't realize it. And people, you know, are very blasé. Like I know you said one of yours was when you were on um, a kite board. Kite boarding, yep. And, 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 you know, you have that initial injury, which everyone knows, you know, if you hit your head or if something happens, but you, you know, the brain is kind of bouncing around in this fairly hard case. And so you can do damage to an area, you know, that's not actually the area you hit with that rebound effect. Correct. So I think, you know, people need to, you know, people who think, oh, well, that, this doesn't apply to me because I've never had a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, you know, maybe look back in your past and there probably is an instance where that could have happened. Oh, for uh, sure. And I think, I think it can be minor as well, right? All of mine have been quite intense because of sports, but mm-hmm. it could be as simple as, as you know, if you're from, the, from a place with snow or ice that you're walking and you slip and you fall yeah. and you brace your fall, you hold onto your arms, let's say, but your neck kind of, kind of slams, uh, slaps yes. back and forth a little bit. That already, your neck is quite, while it's quite strong in your head itself and in your, in your skull, your brain is bouncing between one side and the other side. And like you just said, it, it can result in a bruise on the brain. Yeah. Right. And, and what's, what's tough about these brain injuries is that they're silent and they're invisible. And where, whereas if you broke a wrist, you go to the doctor, you get a cast, That's people right. see it. That's and you right. have six weeks where you are, you are immobilized. Now, can you immobilize your brain? No, because even now I'm sitting here talking to you and you guys as well. At the same time that we're having a conversation, we're thinking, what is the next thing we're going to say? How are we responding to the person sitting across? How are we engaging? Also, by the way, there's a noise that's coming from over to the right. Or how am I sitting? My digestion that's happening. There's so many beautiful things that our brain is doing simultaneous to the cognitive things that we think of right so it's very very difficult i.e almost impossible 
to immobilize the brain. And so for me, one of the things that I had to do was, and, and that is what I needed to do, and what many people need to do is completely remove themselves from the vast majority of inputs that they're receiving. So Russ, like what you were saying with your daughters, you know, if she had light sensitivity, how do we remove the light? How do we remove computers and flicker and even reading, even, even taking in any other inputs that causes the brain to work, right? So for me, I had three months where I, I, I was lucky enough to be able to take that time off. And I went to my family's house in, in really the middle of nowhere. And I didn't see a single soul. And the only thing I did was give my brain time to rest. So no reading, no podcasts, no nothing. It was, it was kind of Dr. Jack Cruz talked a lot about it, but light water magnetism, right? I was yeah. grounding every day. I was swimming. I was out in the sun. Um, I was, I started, I was vegetarian for nine years and understanding more about the, the fat that my brain needs as fuel. I started taking in a lot more omega threes. The challenge with omega three is, uh, and there's a beautiful brain, uh, book, um, when brains collide that I would recommend anybody to read, um, which, which talks about, it, it was, a an army, I believe it was an army doctor, uh, who started using a lot of omega and omega three in a protocol, uh, to help ex army army vets. So if they had PTSD, if they had concussions, if they have traumatic brain injuries, any any of those things. And he found that omega-3 was a beautiful thing to to get the brains back up and running. The challenge again being making sure that you have a very good and good and clear source. Yeah. Because many of these omega threes can be can fall rancid very quickly. Did did you eat fish or did you take the tablets? So I ate fish. Um I at first started doing with omega three because I didn't really I, I, it was a, it was a challenge, right. To go from yeah. nine years of vegetarianism of to, course. to eating yeah, fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day it was, wait, I need, my brain needs this. I, yeah. I need this. So I'm going to need to make some changes if I want to get back, uh, because I swung all the way to, to, to disease. So I need to swing quite far the other way to right myself. And so I, I mean, I was eating fish probably three, four times a week. Um, which was fantastic because it gave my brain what it needed, but then obviously resulted in mercury toxicity. <laughs> uh, so, so there's, there's always this balance when we talk about health and it's, and I think that there's that element of find the thing that is your biggest pain point and start with that because there's so many different things within health that you can start with and you can try to start with. And it's, if you're having gut dysbiosis, you're having a poor bowel movement, start with that. Don't start yeah talking about EMFs and electromagnetic fields until you, you figured that one out. So, so how did you then decide to take your, I mean, what made you take three months off and go and do that for your brain and, you know, like turn off all the lights and start eating fish because that's, you know, not something that I think is probably recommended to do. For me, it was, I hit such rock bottom that I, I needed to figure something out. Right. right. And I was going to all these doctors and they, uh, they said, all oh, my scans are fine and everything's fine. But if you wake up with a chronic headache and you have the headache all day long and you go to bed with a headache, that's not fine. That is not normal. No. <laughs> you know? No. So I figured, okay, how do I, and I, I had previously kind of years before I had apprenticed at an Ayurvedic clinic in India. And one of the main things that they had said was they would only take in patients for three weeks. That was the minimum. And they always said, if we take, when we take our clients in, our patients in, we ask them to stop everything for those three weeks and focus and let their brain and their body and everything focus just on healing. And so right. for three weeks, it was, because it's, it's funny to me to think that once we've gotten so diseased, whatever it is, be, be it, uh, you know, women with PCOS or endometriosis or brain injuries or gut dysbiosis or you name it, right? Our bodies are fighting against the environment. They're fighting against all these things that we're doing that are, that are, that are invading them. So we need to start unpeeling everything. And if it's something as traumatic as what I had, which was quite intense, then yeah. I need, I needed to do something quite intense, Right. And yep. so I just started on feeling, and I was living in London at the time. Uh, and I knew that London wasn't good for me. The, frankly, the food was awful. The, the EMF, 
Sorry, but you know. <laughs> Neighbor, it was your neighborhood. To... It could have been a neighborhood <laughs> thing, Sarah. No, no, I'm that's sorry. <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> sorry, sorry, not sorry, but like yeah. when your food is wrapped in plastic the way that it is, like there's no need for fruit to be wrapped in plastic. No, you're you know? right. You're totally right. You know what is going on? I mean, it is a yeah. It's crazy town. Yeah, I totally agree. Sarah and I, 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 Dasha, Sarah and I have a thing now. We've started to realize we have to speak up when we're when we're pushed to a point in our podcast. <laughs> you just made Sarah speak up and say, "I'm going to defend my 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 food culture here." Um, but you're probably right. You're probably right on that. I'm one, just but... saying that the groceries that are present in London do cause me to desire more. Well, we, you know, it's funny, Sarah and I did talk about this recently about the fruit availability in America versus the fruit availability in European countries. Like we are spoiled here and because we get year round blueberries, we get year round fruit because we're importing from Chile. But we also I live in an area where like we grow all this stuff and it's like right here and it's giant. Um, but, you know, it's we're not all as lucky as us Californians to to have fruit 24 Seven, no, and I think that, that's the whole thing about eating seasonally. And if Dasha, you know, you're specifically looking for high antioxidants and all of that stuff. Yeah, you know, London, especially in winter, might not be the place. Although, you know, maybe you could get some mackerel or some oily fish for your brain. But I, no, I totally get it. I mean, this is also something else that we always say. It's about the environment. You know, you have to put yourself in an environment that is suited to what you are trying to do and if you're trying to recover from a brain injury you know maybe being in the center of London you know is not the place and and I think the thing is I just started looking around and saying is this going to give me what I need to to write to write this right and and I knew that I needed sun I knew that I needed to be grounding. I knew that I, and all of those things would help to reduce my inflammation. Did you have all the and, brain scans and stuff, Dasha? Did you go and get like the EEGs and? Yep. Yep. I had everything done. Um, right. I had them, I had them all done. And, and frankly, none of them showed anything intense, which was okay. interesting. Yeah. I feel, I feel that the main reason why I had such a, a, a kind of strong, uh, a strong injury was because two years prior to that, or a year prior to that, I had three root canals. Oh, right. And so I, I wonder if there was an element of that impacting the brain injury worse or kind of stronger, right? Um, I also had one, uh, one implant done, which means metal. Metal in the mouth, not so good. We know this. There's a, um, there's a really good uh, documentary called The Root Cause, uh, which I'd recommend everybody to read or excuse me, watch. It used to be on Netflix. Uh, it's it's since been taken down. But if you can find the root cause, it talks about how important the dent, the the, the teeth are to the function of your brain, the function of your body. Um, they're attached to many different meridians. And if you have what if you have root canals with some teeth removed or um, or any implants, then those can result in what's called a cavernoma. Uh, and a cavernoma is wherein your tooth it is that that canal is blocked off and because there's no longer a nerve left there you don't feel any pain but there could be inflammation there could be pus there could be a lot of things that are going wrong which is very close your mouth is very close to the brain and therefore it's leading to more inflammation in the brain and you don't even know what's going what's what's happening oh, that's interesting so, and maybe stuff's crossing the blood brain barrier there then because you've got that direct access from all of those those nerves going to your teeth yeah that's again that's something that's being um linked very closely with Parkinson's disease uh, and Alzheimer's is, you know, do you, what kind of bacteria do you have in your mouth? And, you know, like you say, the fillings and what's going on. So uh, I think people are starting to catch on to the interconnectedness of the whole body. The whole body is a system, but it's interesting that you brought that up, you know, in relation to that could have made your neuroinflammation or your brain inflammation worse but you had that awareness. So did you get, did you have the metal taken out? You did. So I had, yeah. So I had that taken out um, right. in terms of cavernomas. I didn't have anything, um, right. but yeah, it's, it, it's so, it's so funny that now modern medicine is getting back, is getting to the point where older traditions, Chinese medicine, acupuncture, mm. things like that is, has, has been around for decades, thousands of years. And only now are we able to quantify some of the things that they already need to be true, right? 
Yeah. Uh, so we, we knew that the teeth are linked to these meridians. And so if you have a specific tooth that's taken out, could it be that it's actually the same meridian as, you know, your pancreas? Could it be that it's the same meridian as another organ in the body, which then when the tooth is taken out, then you end up having issues. Right? So by meridian, you're talking yeah. about an energy channel there. Because we also Correct. had a lovely uh, Reiki uh, teacher uh, who came on the show. Uh, Chris, was it Christy? Was Christy, Christy yeah. yeah. Um, and she was talking about these energy channels. But, you know, it's hard to, to connect that with like something very physical, like, OK, you're connecting your teeth to your brain. Because, you know, p- the language is so different. You have this kind of very esoteric language where people are talking about energy channels and meridians and kind of healing in a in a way which isn't mechanical and then here you are saying you know this is a very real connection this is actually like some kind of channel in the body yeah so so i'm not a specialist in this so forgive me if i'm speaking out of turn but from, from what i understand it to be it's that each tooth is linked via this meridian channel by this um yeah i mean it's it's it is esoteric in the sense that can we specifically see it I believe that there are, are that people as acupuncturists, they can follow a meridian channel down the line, right? right. Um, now, so that therefore that means that it's not specifically the cardiovascular system or the lymphatic system or things like that, but there is a channel that's going throughout the body. Yeah, possibly and, and it, water, couldn't it be, Dasha? It could be something to do with structured water going on the outsides of vessels you know i'm sure sooner or later we will find something that correlates because now you know people are starting to see okay you know you have blood vessels but also the integrity of those blood vessels and how hydrated they are that that also allows flow of information so that's you know. that's really interesting oh i want to look into that that'd be yes yes mm-hmm. i just think you're trying to freak me out for my dentist appointment that i have in an hour <laughs> Ross, I it's okay it's okay it's fine okay? they're probably going to pull the one tooth that regulates my gut which is my biggest problem and then i'm sarah's going to be like we can't figure this out then we'll go back to that tooth dasha it'll be that one tooth it's okay if he suggests you know what, root canal, Ross, seriously if he suggests root canal you need to think about it and maybe see a biological no, dentist because i think it's uh I'm pretty ob- obsessive about my teeth. Like that's one area where my mom taught me well, like brush oh, twice yeah. a day, floss, <laughs> and I do. Uh, my children just look at me like, you're not going to, you're not going to bully me into brushing my teeth. I'm like, okay, but your yellow teeth will bully you into brushing your teeth. Like, you know, but it, is, it isn't super important. I mean, it all starts with, it's so, it's so funny you say that because we, we've talked to people that say, you know, the, the music you listen to affects and impacts yeah. your body. Uh, yeah, it starts with things. your mouth. And your nose, and but it all, you know, and I think what you put into your mouth uh, and what happens in your mouth is, is probably an area we haven't really discussed a lot of. Uh, it's probably something we need to dig into more. Yeah, for your brain, for sure. Yeah. You know, all of this is, you know, that, you know, yeah, it's good for the health of your mouth. But what Dash is talking about here, yeah, this is all about brain health. And we're, we kind of haven't even talked so much about the brain yet. We're talking about all kinds of other things. So I think, yeah, that's, this is the cool part. You know, because you can't, that's something you can easily do. You can't Mm -hmm. fix your brain, but yeah, you can look after your teeth. You can see a biological dentist. You can think about these meridians. I'm curious uh, about the recovery process and the, like, you know, the scar tissueing and the, the longer term impacts for the rest of your life. Right. And you recover, you get better, but do you, you know, how do you, how do you know, you know, you're fully healed and will you ever fully heal from brain injuries you mean yeah not from tooth injuries (laughs) uh i love that question because i so because i saw so many doctors and i tried so many things uh i've now kind of helped been helping different people they they just hear of me randomly of oh yeah you're the girl with all the concussions um and so i'll guide them a little bit of what i think Uh, might help you, might not help you, right? Um, And that's one of the things that I actually talk to people a lot about of, you may never be back to quote unquote, air quotes, normal, right? Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Because change is part of our life. We are going to age, we are going to, you know, you're not going to be the same person you were six months ago. Hopefully not, right? Mm -hmm. So these brain injuries, they, I see them, I've seen them, and it took me a long time to realize that they were really a gift, right? And it caused me, and I still am learning this lesson, it's caused me to slow down. 
because I was always rushing around. I'm always, and it's, it's, it's the rushing woman syndrome <laughs> and it's a very Western thing. And it's, you know, we have to be here and there and over, over schedule and make sure we squeeze the most out of the day. Da, 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 da. And it's amazing. And it, we've all been trained that way in the West and that is causing disease. Full stop, full stop. And so for me, it was a really nice reminder of slow down. And I keep on having to have that reminder because it's just inherent who I am. I want to squeeze the most out of the day. Um, so I think for, for a lot of people, um, post-concussion sim- symptoms, PCS, uh, they can last for months. They can last for years. I am now two and a half years out. And I would say I perceive myself to be about 90% better. Now, do I still have lingering things? Yes. The lingering things that for me have, have been, which is I'm still electro hypersensitive. So prior to, to this last concussion, I never felt electricity or, or computers or screens. I never felt it. And I never even knew that that was a thing. Now I, I know that I'm electro hypersensitive. I am exhausted for two, three days uh, after a flight where obviously when you're in a flight, you've been through the metal detector, you, you're in, in the air, you're closer, you're at the higher up you are, uh, there's more radiation. Plus in every airplane, you now have Wi-Fi course, and yeah. you have these little screens behind your head. You literally have a computer right behind your head, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody in the, in the uh, airplane has two to three devices on average. So, you know, and it's understandable that I, that I get very white afterwards. So I still am electro hypersensitive. I still, um, I'm not 100% in terms of my energy levels. I'm still tired. Uh, And and loud noises still get to me, right? Uh, So so if somebody has really loud music or if there's the the TV that's on, I find it very difficult to concentrate. Like I need need that focus or I need no noise in order to be fully concentrated. Whereas before, as any, you know, any person of, of my age, I would have been doing, you know, working and having music play. And I was annoyed by that. So, I mean, is it annoying? Yes. Am I ever going to get over it? I don't know. But I think that there's also, for me, it's become, it's becoming okay with saying, I'm, this is, this is me. And being able to say it to people and say, Hey, listen, this is, this is what's going on. Right. This is my, the new me. So, that's I, I mean that's that's an it's an incredible process to have to go through and an incredible fight and battle so then there's the transformative moment which it's funny we've talked to many people one of our one of our friends last week we talked to brett moran talked about you know his life and his transformative moment it was not an injury it was sort of a self-induced injury drug use mm-hmm. and going to jail and being a soccer hooligan but there's a transformative moment um and your transformative moment was slowing down probably led to your career change i imagine because i'm still doing the tech stuff and uh i slowing down is impossible because it just doesn't ever stop um but that transformative moment what was that for you that i couldn't remember anything that i read the next the day before Mm. yeah i think that's what it was right like when you i mean i was reading scientific journals i was spending four hours let's say reading them i would take my notes i would read everything i would have highlights i was the nerd i was a complete nerd and then the next day I would look at my notes and I would barely remember anything that I read the day Ugh. before. Yeah. Right. And Terrible. especially, you know, Russ, you, you, you're, you're saying that you're in this tech world and you're go, go, go. Imagine if tomorrow you weren't able to, to remember mm. what you did today. Imagine if you didn't have amazing. that capability. Amazing. It would be amazing for my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's a terrible joke. No, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Like it's, it's really challenging. And so you, decide to make a shift in your life and a change in life. But it wasn't like a, a, a momentary thing. It was a gradual thing where you said, I'm going to take life slower. I'm going into take care of myself and teach others how to take care of themselves as well. Yeah. And I, I think to me, it was a, I mean, I was already shifting away from, from consulting. I was a management consultant. I was already shifting away from that. I knew that I wanted to do something with the brain. Um, so I had already shifted. I had shifted saying I want this to be my focus. Uh, but the question of where my focus goes next, because I was thinking of going back into private equity and kind of being in, um, the translator between the scientists and the, and the business folks. And I said that, that doesn't actually give me that much joy. And I know it's going to be a lot of stress and it's going to be very lucrative, uh, but it is going to be extremely stressful and I cannot Mm -hmm. cope. 
my brain cannot cope. And moreover, even if it did, do I want it to? Right? I think that we're, you know, we're, we're stuck, stuck a little bit. I can say so for myself that I had this plan. I had the checklist. I'm going to get the 4.0. I'm going to get the great job. I'm going to get the internship. Up, 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 up. And even now, lo look at where we've been in the past year and a half. Many of the people, my peers, who are, you know, have all the amazing things, all the accolades, all the, all the things on their resume, they're stuck in a very beautiful penthouse, you know, apartment in New York City. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. not living the life that I have now, which I'm living on a beautiful island in Dominican Republic, I've slowed down and yet I feel like I've moved forward, you know? And I, so I think my career change has said, how do I empower people with good information? And, and I really like the phrase it's kitschy and it's a lot of people use it, but I like it, which is how do you be a lighthouse? How do you shine a little bit of light onto something to say, Hey, try that over there. You know, you're very stressed. Okay. Let's, let's figure out how to, how to remove that, not remove that stress because it's not about removing it. It's about learning how to be more resilient to it, right? Uh, how do you take little breaks throughout the day? How do you start incorporating that? How do you start setting boundaries with your job to say, hey, listen, you know, I'm not going to work until 10 o'clock at night. And that's okay. And what I found, even when I did that in, you know, five years ago, six years ago, I got more respect for it. And I actually was more efficient with my time because I knew that I had to go. And I think that any parent probably sees, knows that as well. The second that all of a sudden you have a little kid to take care of, you're, you're no longer staying at the job that, that much longer. You've got to go pick them up or you've got, you've got somebody to take care of. Right. Did yeah. you, did you meditate pre and, and, and did you, are you a meditator? Yeah. So I, prior to that, probably five years ago, I had done a, let me think longer. I had done a Vipassana meditation um, mm. in India for 10 days. And I absolutely loved it. And if anybody gets the opportunity to do so, please, please, please do yeah. so. Please yeah. do so. It's 10 days. Sounds absolutely mental. Sounds bonkers. It's 10 days of not talking. And you guys can tell that I clearly talk a lot. Uh, and, and it was exactly what I needed. It is a shower for your brain. It is a surgery for your brain, right? Because... When was the last time that you had a day, two days, three days, 10 days where you are not speaking mm -hmm. and where you are? I mean, when I, I went, don't know, in was... the lockdown, I think I was pretty close to three months. But yeah. um, I, I think that. I think it's brilliant what you're doing. Also, tell us a bit about your retreats now, Dasha, because this is something that you're trying to teach people. This, you know, you had your awakening with these terrible concussions, but it would be great if people could get there without having to go through the, you know, smashing their head part. Uh, yeah. So tell us about those brain retreats, because I think a lot of people listening also want to have that. They also want to be able to live their more authentic life or find yeah. ways to cut down the hours that they're doing. But, you know, does it really take something so dramatic to get there? Or how do you coach people to do it? Yeah, thank you. And thanks for even kind of mentioning it. So so I, I'm starting to do these retreats down here in Dominican Republic. And the idea here is it's not a yoga retreat. It's not a meditation retreat. It's a healthy vacation, a health vacation. Right. And the intention here is that you get to understand more about this world of health, Right. So it's done, instead of just listening to a podcast or going to a conference and seeing some of these things, you actually get to experience it within those five days. So it's five days, you come down here, every retreat is co-hosted with myself as well as somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I'll have a specific doctor or a researcher or a specialist come down and there will be a focus. So we have one that's coming up in January, one in February, one in March. And each of them have a different focus, uh, physical fitness, uh, aging with, with vibrancy and vitality, and then breath work and uh, breath work and ice, ice bathing, if you will. Uh, and again, the idea is you come, you come here, we're going to have separate workshops to teach you about ice bathing or cold showers, or uh, why do we need to wake up in the morning and look at the sun first thing in the morning? Mm -hmm. What is that actually doing to your circadian rhythms? And let's try it. Let's practice it. Same thing with fasting. Let's talk about fasting for women versus for men. It's very, very, very different. And we need to, we need to understand why that's different as well as give it a go. You, a lot of people that I speak to, they hear these podcasts and they're like, okay, yeah, 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 I should do that. 
but then they don't know where to start or they don't yeah. know, or it's a little exactly. scary, right? Yeah, like, oh, okay, where, I have to. Yeah, you're totally right. And, and that's where we've tried to come in and try to do these seven day challenges because it's, you know, people talk about it and it's very interesting, but then how practical is it? And this is where Russ yeah. and I have tried to come in and like uh, do some of these things. So I think it's so cool that you're doing that down there in a kind of, a holiday or vacation, as you say, in the States environment, because then it, it, you're doing it with other people. You don't feel so silly doing some of these things, which seem a bit far out. But yeah. It's totally cool. But yeah, that's exactly where we're coming from, too, because it, it's one thing to get this information. It, you just need to start trying little things, like implementing little things. And as Russ and I found out, some of these things are easier to implement than others, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think the, the, the thing that these retreats give you is, in addition, we're going to be giving uh, lab analyses. So one of the main things with where, when people get it wrong, in my opinion, in terms of biohacking, is that they will get started and they will buy up all the different supplements. They will try everything before understanding what their body actually needs. So there's my, my mentor and friend, Dr. Nasha Winters. She always talks about test, assess address, don't guess, right? Mm -hmm. So the first step of it all is to test. You need yeah. to test to understand what is actually going on underneath the covers, if you will, um, or and, and, and figure out, oh, I do have this imbalance, therefore I do need this supplement. Or I have, you know, my hydrochloric acid is very low. Okay, what can I do either in supplement form or naturally? What are the foods that I can eat, right? If my for example, if I see that somebody's cortisol levels are very, very, very high or flatlined, I'm not necessarily putting them into an ice bath. No, right? that's, yeah, that's very interesting. It's yes, it's a definitely about doing what's right for the individual. And that means your own self-assessment or which we're trying to bring out to people or also getting some expert opinion if you're not quite sure about those numbers. So yeah. it's, super, it's super cool. I hope we can come down and do a rebel scientist brain retreat maybe we'll do some stuff about light that will be super cool uh come we'll on down get, come on yeah, down yeah we'll maybe get yeah, the rebel please, scientist please, please. team down in dominican republic i think that would be cool so so let's end on a on a seven day challenge for us then dasha because uh you're right you know it's one thing to hear about these things but you know it's another thing to actually start to try and implement these little changes uh so what do you have i for think it, I, would, I would keep it really simple and start taking yep. cold showers in the morning Oh, we did. A lot of we, people. Have, we have done. Uh, we had, uh, do you know Andreas Brett? Um, yeah, Brett yes, yes, yes. We had him on and he has in his biohacking center, he has a chest freezer that he sits in, like yeah. an actual chest, which is so funny. So we have done a little, we have a little experience of the cold showers. Um, okay. But I think we can probably do that one again. That, what did you think, Russ? How did you get on with the cold showers in the morning? Hey, I actually do uh, the cold shower. Uh, I actually do take cold showers uh, when I shower <laughs> I, <laughs> as often as possible. Uh, I really actually enjoy it. It wakes me right up. And um, I actually don't like li uh, warm water. I'm very much an Eastern European, like, like I am, I don't like heat. I like cold. So I would prefer to be cold. I love uh, it. I love it. You love it. I don't love the cold showers, but I don't mind the sea swimming or the lake swimming or something. Although, I was in Florida recently and the sea was like a bath. So that's probably cheating, but I, I don't love the cold showers, but for you, Dasha. <laughs> no, if, you, if you've already done, I have, so another, another one that could be, it's a simple one. And I think that a lot of people talk about it, but um, before you go to bed at night, this, this, this is one thing that I just never thought I had time for. I was always busy and we always are busy, but people talk about a gratitude journal. I don't have time to write a gratitude journal. I don't have time to write it down, but I do have, time as i'm falling asleep just to say what are three things i'm grateful for okay right so yeah, don't that's a don't one. i wouldn't write it down if you don't have time to write it down don't but for me it's really nice when i'm falling asleep with my partner say hey what was good about today what was great okay. what, what are you grateful for about today and i think especially if you're somebody who's dealing with a brain injury or dealing with some health health issue it's yeah. a moment to say actually there was goodness here there was yeah. this, and i and i talk about um you know how there's this term microaggressions that people talk about? Well, why don't we start finding micro joys, huh. right? And I have these little things where it's like every, there's micro joys literally everywhere and we just need to keep an eye out for them. So for me, I love my coffee in the morning and I love pouring it over after I've, 
adding cacao butter and all this stuff to it. And if it, if I pour it just right and it hits the top of that. Oh, we lost her. Hold on. <laughs> we lost her just as she was at the top of her coffee right I there. I was right there with her and then we lost her. It was very weird. Uh, <laughs> I, we're we're going to keep this because we could, because. I'm, I she I oh, think her back. computer was dying. Was your computer dying? And then you logged in with your phone. She's back. Oh, okay. Turn my yourself. iPad was dying. Yes, my iPad was dying. So I needed to to swap over. That's all right, Josh. We were right there with you, right at the top of the coffee, and then yeah. you disappeared. Yeah. So coffee. right. So so the so the <laughs> idea of the micro joys is find these micro joys, find these moments where you're like, yeah, that was good, right? Because there's so much negativity in the world right now, and there's and I think that this was one thing that. I, I read somewhere for every one negative thing, it takes us five positive things to balance it off. Wow. Um, so think about the amount of crap that, sorry, but like yeah. the amount of stuff that we have that is bombarding us day yeah. in and day out right now yeah. with negativity. And yeah. so to offset that, we need to have five to one ratio. So finding, okay, what's, what was good? What was, so right now I'm going to hang up the phone here and be like, yeah, that was pretty good. What was good about this meeting? Right. What was yeah. good about the podcast? Yeah. And even at night when we're falling asleep, hey, what are the things that 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 made this day great? And I think if we start priming ourselves for this, not only is there, I mean, Joe, Joe Dispenza talks about it quite a bit, but you start attracting more of this of, of greatness to you. Yes, it's woo woo, but you know what? I'm gonna go with it. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Well, There's certainly woo woo about it. I I, <laughs> I I'm I'm a huge, I, I truly a believer in kindness and compassion and uh i i had a uh, I, I went spent the weekend fretting about something and my typical reaction was like you're not going to say it fuck that fuck that thing and that whole i was so mad and it was just, just my old pattern of thinking and i was going to do something that i probably was going to regret because of it like i was going to rifle off an email and say i'm so pissed about this. and i decided i was going to do the opposite and just said how can i help and it yeah. was uh, transformative for me for the person didn't expect it i think that sometimes they expect uh a different and i i think kindness is just so important it's just and especially when you're everyone's stressed out everyone's working hard and yeah. doing challenging things just little micro kindnesses uh, little micro joys is great i love that yeah yeah we'll take that micro joys yeah for sure micro but... joys are greater than microaggressions boom boom <laughs> boom, boom. Well, Love you're it. a macro joy for me, Dasha, definitely, Likewise. constantly. <laughs> so it was so, so, so lovely to have you on. We really do support what you're doing down there with your retreats, and we're pumping that out as much as possible. Hopefully, we'll even get down there to see you. So, yes, thank you so much for coming on. It was a real treat. Likewise, likewise. I can't wait to see you guys down here. Perfect. We'll be there. We will be there soon. <laughs> I'll bring my, I'll bring my, 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 my beautiful wife. She'll come to She and I travel a lot. Um, and you know, it's funny as my daughter's middle name is joy. Her mother's name was joy. And my wife is literally like the joy. Like I walk out and she's always so positive. Even after like an incredibly stressful day, she always finds a way to be positive. And I try to be like that. It's so hard. It's hard. But when I say it's hard, it's it's i'm just setting myself up for it not being easy right so yeah and you have a lot of great examples by the sound of it that's so cool yeah, for yes. sure. we'll, do it. we'll do it we'll do a whole um whole contingent of us will go down there yeah, <laughs> yeah no and it's and, and, for, and for anybody who's who's listening if if we're still recording if anybody who's listening who does want to um to come on down i mean again we're we're having three retreats right now we've got planned for january february and march 2022 um and the website will be up to for people to sign up uh www.whealth.community and uh and again most of them are going to be geared specifically towards women's health and women's biohacking because i think that there's a lot of uh uh, a need for it, a need for community and better understanding of women's biohacking. Um, so we'll we'll likely have a brain biohacking or brain health uh, retreat as well in the future with Sarah. Uh, but for now, Jan, Feb, and March is is that. Um, so stay tuned. And if you if you if you want for more information about what it is and how how to get involved or how to sign up, then just feel free to message me as well. Perfect. We'll put all your details up in the blog. That's great. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks for the time, guys. This has been fun. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. 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 Take care, Dasha. We'll see you soon. Thanks. And good luck, Ross, with the uh, 
with a dentist. The teeth. Thank you. I'll send, Thank I'll you. send you a picture of each of the meridians so then you can tell <laughs> you can tell the dentist, don't touch this meridian. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sarah, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Russ? Oh, I'm just grateful you're here. <laughs> nice to be here. here again, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I just feel like I've been thanking everybody for being in my life and for tolerating me at this point. Oh, I see you. But this is one of the things you're grateful for. Yes, you. After our Dasha, D Dasha. Do you know I keep saying Dasha like the reindeer? It's Dasha, of course. It's is it? It's it's a it's a long a Dasha like yeah. that. Then I sound yeah. like I'm uh, I'm in like Liverpool. Dasha, is, I can't do Liverpool. I can't. I can't do that. Oh, you like can't. That. No. You can't. Come on, everyone's gonna be. Everyone's gonna be like, okay, that's we're canceling Russ. And, and my daughter, my daughter said, we said something the other day. She's like, you're gonna get canceled. And my daughter said, I'm not even famous. I'm gonna get canceled. <laughs> so not yet, Russ, not not yet. yet. No, we don't. No one needs to get canceled. Everyone's accepted. So uh, Dasha was 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 lovely. She's fabulous. And, and I think the fabulous thing about her is that she's had her own health challenges and she's finding a way out of it. And now she's bringing that to other people. You know, yeah. it's the story of a lot of biohackers, of course, that people come from a place where they need to find a solution and the, and the medical system isn't working, which is yeah. exactly what happened with Dasha. But she's now, you know, taking that a step further. She's doing brain retreats. I mean, uh, as you know, I'm totally into the brain, but I often talk to Dasha and kind of bounce ideas because she really has studied a lot on it. Yeah. Yeah. She seems like, you know, it's, it's, it's really becoming clear the, the balance that you need in your life that if you lean too far down and you fall, you kind of fall off the edge a little bit, um, you sort of need that to become one of these people that we're meeting. Cause I think you need to see what that dark place is like to really understand what the light place is like, right? And I think we saw that with, with Deanna. We've seen that with, 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 with many others. And I think, again, now, and with Brett too, right? Like, I think that when you have that dark part of your life, um, the light becomes even more inviting. Yeah, I, I think for a lot of people, it's, they've had a wake-up call of some yeah. kind. I mean, actually, I think it's cool that, that what we're trying to do is bring this to people without them having to kind of hit rock bottom you know right. please don't Which, hit rock bottom yeah exactly well yeah. if possible make these yeah. improvements now before you have to have like a really awful health right. challenge uh yeah i mean yeah to be awakened means you're asleep right so maybe let's just let you be asleep and 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 then you can become awakened you don't need to go to jail or be a soccer hooligan or you know get into a terrible car accident like poor dasha did uh but you're right like Let's identify it now that it is important to yeah. be be good with your brain, right? And be good to your body. Exactly. Yeah. And this is, you know, we had Joe DeGiro who was talking a lot about, you know, how easy it is to damage your brain. We've had Dasha yeah. talking about it. So I think people, yeah, th this is kind of a wake up call for people out there that if you've, you know, if you've gone through life, you probably have done a few things to your brain that get it to the stage where you really do have to make some emergency choices. Yeah. These are things you can start doing now. Very, very simple things, you know, yeah. protect your brain, make sure that you're eating food that's not inflammatory, you know, make sure that you yeah. are optimizing your circadian biology, you know, all these simple things that we've been going through for the course of the episodes, you know, yeah. these are things you can do now before you damage your brain. Let's try and kind of head off those issues. Prevention is always better than cure, but of course, you know, as humans, right. we tend to... Yeah. And there's, Push you know, I think having, having lived with someone, I mean, multiple people in my life who had he like head traumas, like, like I myself had many concussions playing football and my, my son had three or four playing football. And then my, my poor daughter who played soccer and loved it had three kind of in a row. And that was the end of her soccer career. And you can see it takes a long time for the brain to heal from a, from a, from physical damage. Um, and people really don't know what emotional damage they're doing to their brain. Um, and it takes time to heal. And what are the things that you've taught me about healing? It's sleep. It's turning yeah. off the blue light. Yeah. Eat well. No, blue light toxicity. I'm learning. 
Yeah, what are other things good. we can do to heal, Sarah? What are other things to do to heal? I've run out of my list. <laughs> are you here. struggling already, Ross? <laughs> yes. yes. I the got main five. Thing, the main things, of course, is is sleep, rest, taking care of your light exposure. And by light, we kind of encompass Wi-Fi and every other electromagnetic yeah. field around us, you know, shutting off for things. We have breathing, you know, Christian did the breathing. We have ice yep. baths, way that, ways that you can get back to that natural state. I, after we were, after we finished with Dasha, I looked up, uh, is it, it's EMFs, right? Are that's what they're called? Yes, electromagnetic fields. And uh, recognizing that I wear these silver headphones wherever I go. Um, yeah. I feel like uh, what's that? There, there's a comic book character that's always wearing headphones. What is how dangerous is that, and why is it dangerous? Well, well, you're constantly putting that field into your brain. I mean, you're literally, you know, baking your brain in those electromagnetic fields. And I don't know if you noticed with Dasha, but she had those things. They're called ear tubes, where actually the electricity only goes to a certain point, and then they're literally just tubes, the part that goes into your ears, because she uh -huh. has this electromagnetic sensitivity she's one of the people that can actually sense that so yeah. you know there are ways that you can negate that and but certainly having those things attached to your head for a big percentage of the days is probably not a great idea if you're okay really trying to focus fine. on brain health fine go on they're gone <laughs> they go, take them off you don't need I can't, them i can't hear you <laughs> but you're right you're right and i think it's just bringing those things to light like i think it's so sarah you're it's so funny about you that i think what i love so much is that you are a light expert but you are shining a light on all these things that i think i, I didn't know about and I, hopefully our audience you know will learn something from you so thank you for being our flashlight and you know i think as one of our other guests said you know i think you are our lighthouse, right? You're the lighthouse for us. It's such a good metaphor. You know, we're all about light in so many yeah. ways. So yeah, I love that. Thank you, Russ, for saying that. But yeah, I love that because it is about shining light on these things and trying to nudge people in the right direction before it gets to a critical stage. Yeah. So let's try and look up. Like you say, kids at the moment playing football, they're now saying, should we be teaching kids headers? Or, you know, all of these things. Yeah. Because people are starting to realize, oh, right, you know, this has yeah. a long-term effect that we're only just now seeing as the population ages and all of these things are starting right. to become apparent. Right. No, that's very true. So I will be the light keeper, the, 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 the salty old man in the lighthouse <laughs> trying to protect it while you are out there shining the light on everyone. How's that? How's shining that the light. Well, with the help of all of our lovely guests, of course, because right. um, Dasha for short, she, she was great. And I think like doing these brain retreats is a brilliant idea. Hopefully she can. Yeah help people out there we'll put up where we people can find Asha if they've got any questions about concussion I know that she's looking to use certain measurements that people may find helpful yeah um her seven day challenge was to do the gratitude which we had done with Boomer so I already had a bit of a head start on that Same. but of course you know one of the things I'm grateful for is having all of these lovely guests to right. speak to I, I mean I know we've got some really cool ones lined up that's right and I write I write all my gratitude down uh, and, you know, it's interesting. I was reading an email that I sent for work the other day, and I used the word grateful four times. And I, I think it's just something that I now recognize that I am really, I am grateful for these people. I'm, I, oh. It's not that I'm not just using the word, uh, you know, to, to seem nice. I really am grateful. Like without other people, I would not be able to get my job done. Um, without my wife, I would not be able to do a lot of the things in my life. Without my children, I would not be able to do And without you. Like, I think just, we should just stop for a second and say, I'm not using you. I'm grateful for you. Yes, I think so. And and it's amazing with all of this high tech and all of this amazing stuff that's coming out. And yet, you know, this is not the first of our guests to say, this is some really, really simple fundamental thing about being human. It's just gratitude. Yeah. You know, right. we can have all, you know, we can have technology that costs 15 grand. You can lay in it. It can do all kinds of fancy things just being grateful. You know, that's one of yeah. the things that people come back to. So, I, you know, I had a college professor that said to me, you know, do you think uh, driving on the freeway that, that humans in cars are selfish or are they helpful? And half the class said they're selfish, rude, honking at me, blah, blah, blah. And half the class said, no, actually they're, they're actually, you know, they're being kind because if they weren't being kind, they'd, 
they'd crash into my car or cut me off, right? Like we are all driving in straight lines, but slowly. And I, th- I think of that every time I cross the road when I'm in New York City, I haven't been to New York in a while, but I'm always like, thank you for not running me over. He stopped. Thank you. Yeah, just about usually in New right. York. Right. So again, yeah. But yeah, everyone has a little bit of kindness, even if they're in a hurry, even if of they're course. in a hurry. Of course. Super cool. So thank, thank you, you. Dasha. Thank, you. thank you, Russ. And yeah. yeah, I'm grateful that I'll be able to speak to you soon with the next guest. Beautiful. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Rebel Scientist Podcast is a Breaking the Gray production, created by Russ Eisenman and Paul Wood, hosted by Sarah Turner, music and sound editing by Logan Shea. For more information and other fantastic podcasts, visit BreakingTheGray.com. That's gray with an E, BreakingTheGray.com. Breaking the gray.